Welcome back to Money News right around the country. Do you know for the last uh, couple of weeks we've been taking up a campaign on behalf of a number of owner drivers that have uh, rung us up. These are truck drivers uh, who claim in many cases that they could be forced out of business as a result of a ruling. Uh, this is by the Road Safety Remuneration uh, Tribunal uh, that says that there would be higher and minimum rates of payment for those people who are driving trucks around this country. Now the suggestion was this was put in place to try and stop big supermarkets from trying and effectively try and deal one against the other and push prices down and as a result to lead to uh, perhaps even shortcuts in safety standards on our roads which nobody would want. But the truth is that many of the small single truck operators that we've spoken to, many people who have maybe got two or three families employed through the truck business, have really come to us and said that they feel as though this particular decision uh, is going to ultimately uh, kill off their businesses. Some have already been told that if they need to raise their prices to comply with this order uh, by this tribunal, uh, that effectively there would be no business for them in the future. Well, of course, many people have also highlighted the fact that this was put together by the Transport Workers Union and then put to the former government. This was the creation not only of that Road uh, Safety Remuneration Tribunal, but even perhaps this way of having minimum rates of pay. Let's go to Tony Sheldon, who's a National Secretary of the Transport Workers Union, who's on the line listening to this right now. Many thanks for your time, Tony. Oh, good day, Ross. Thanks for the opportunity, mate. Go back in history for me. Why was it that you went to the Labor government, as it was at that time, and tried to put this uh, this situation in place? Well, I guess probably probably the start from the beginning is that 246 owner drivers and family members over the last 15 years have been lobbying government to get minimum rates across the country, similar to what already exists in the state of New South Wales in many sectors of road transport industry where owner drivers in a number of circumstances are actually paid more than this order um, that comes from the 13th and, uh, sorry, from the 14th of April comes into effect. Into effect. What the um, argument's been from everything from coroner's reports to government inquiries to academic reports and most importantly from the vast bulk of the drivers themselves is that they've been so badly ripped off and the pressure has been so dramatic um, from the top of the supply chain uh, that they haven't been able to sustain both um, their business or and sustain safe maintenance of their vehicles. And you know, part of that study leading into the um, into the laws that came in uh, heard evidence from um, drivers, um, literally dozens upon dozens of drivers, which talked about you know, average income for owner drivers, you know, working. 70, 80, in some circumstances, over 90 hours a week, getting paid as little as $29,000 a year. Everybody would understand that safety is paramount on our roads. There is no doubt about that. And drivers that take shortcuts should not be doing so. That's 100% given. But the truth is many people believe that as a result of this mandated minimum payment that they will be required to, to comply with, that they won't be given the freedom of the market. They won't be given the ability to potentially be more efficient than some big operators. And as a result of that, they won't be able to price themselves under large organisations to be able to try and win work. In fact, they are likely to lose work as a result of this order. Uh, I mean, this is a common thread. We've had so many people calling, so many emails that have come to us in regards to this. It's not just one or two. It's a genuine pattern that's out there. Yeah, Ross, it's, um, there's a, in, in uh, at the moment, there's close to 20,000 owner drivers that are members of the Transport Workers Union and many thousands of others that are actually um, receive benefits of agreements that are superior to this road safety remuneration tribunal, and that's not to take away with you know, genuine concern that people have because the you know, the fear mongering that's been put out by major retailers, um, by companies who have been pressuring this industry for a very long time, inappropriately, unethically, and soon to be illegally, um, to cut corners because this is not about targeting um, in any shape or fashion. Um, the many thousands of owner drivers, whether they be in the union or not, this is actually about saying that there is a maintenance schedule which was sought out by KPMG by dozens of uh, people intervening about what the rate um, and a minimum rate should be because this is a minimum rate. It's not the maximum rate. It's a minimum rate. In actual fact, we're in some areas we're also having arguments with companies that are trying to drop the rate. Um, to allow to this minimum rate, there are as many companies in various sectors, including in retail, uh, where some um, 
uh, drivers are getting paid more than that. And, of course, that'll be illegal if they try to drop it, as it'll be illegal not to pay it. OK, I was going to say, Tony, also that there was the likes of Toll and Lynn Fox that also made submissions that warned the tribunal against making this determination, uh, that said really it was not necessary, uh, that they were big trucking operators. They perhaps had something to gain uh, if some of the small owner drivers were put out of business. But even they argued that they wanted to have some of those small owner drivers remaining sort of a competitive force in the industry. Why do you think that the uh, that even those big trucking companies such as Toll and Linfox were not listened to? Well, I think there's a, there's a couple of things. I, I, look, I just want to, to, to put it in perspective about um, what uh, some of those larger companies have said and what thousands of union members have been saying um, and, and have been getting rates superior to this rate that's been scheduled out um, in the retail sector now. Like Linfox said, and I'll just quote from a statement very briefly from the 18th of February, the business has, and from the outset, supported the making of an order in the retail and specific sectors of the long-distance road transport industry. Further, the business has always held the view that a sustainable and safe transport industry is paramount and continues to hold this view. Now, that's that's a quote from Linfox, but regard to argument about what the rate should or shouldn't be, a competent court made a decision from uh, detailed evidence from various parties the best quote, I think, you know, from you know, from transport companies that have opposed the rate, uh, is they don't want to pay it, and you know that's not surprising. You, you might be surprised by this, Ross, but you know we go into wage negotiations regularly on behalf of employees and owner drivers and many industries and many sectors, and the employers don't want to pay a higher rate. That's very rare that there's actually, you know, coming to the table and saying, here's what we're going to, you know, pay as a remuneration. There's a negotiation. There's a position between the parties. I mean, you'd find that in, I'm sure, in even your own contract. I'd be surprised if, if your own, you know, uh, companies come out and say, hey, Bill Ross, regardless of a good job you're doing, here's the extra amount of money we're going to pay you. It just doesn't, you know, happen, in, certainly in the transport industry and it happens with very few others. And just a final one for you. Many people are also suggesting that this would actually push more work towards the big companies, that the smaller independent owner drivers would be dropped off. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, it would actually lead to higher union membership as a result of more work going to uh, those larger trucking companies. I- is this actually a ploy for the Transport Workers Union to end up with more membership? Look, what what happens now um, is that there is tens of thousands of owner drivers and owner drivers on management committees, honorary delegates. Um, uh, the president of the New South Wales branch of the union is an owner driver who actually fought two of them, you know, goodwill fights um, a number of years ago and very renowned across the industry, well, the name of George Clark. But there's many, many owner drivers that um, have fought and will continue to argue that they deserve a fair return for their capital investment in their labour so they can have a well-maintained vehicle. But would also argue that everyone else deserves a fair rate too. So owner drivers are, are going to um, be the winners out of it, but the challenge will be, as it's happened before this order, uh, you saw the example of what happened with um, the Sydney, Sydney Airport Tunnel. Um, many of your listeners would have heard the, you know, the horror of having two exploited visa workers getting poorly paid uh, didn't know how to back out of B-double, yeah. two up drivers. And so, so that sort of issue is well before an, um, you know, any order comes down. There will be unscrupulous uh, operators and there will be clients that will be squeezing operators to try to take the unscrupulous avenue. What I would say this to, to everybody and support that you know, action for if somebody is losing their uh, contract for getting the right safe rate to, be able to maintain their vehicle and provide their labour, then they should get their mates together, whether they're in the union or not. They should stand together and they should take action against their employer and, most importantly, the client that's screwing on the rate. Tony, I've got to move, but uh, I do appreciate your time. The National Secretary of the Transport Workers Union, Tony Sheldon, on that important issue.